Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the Unfound podcast channel on YouTube. I am Unfound's host, Ed Densel. Before I get started, I want to remind you that the videos I do, such as this one, a map analysis, are not meant to take the place of the episodes that come out every Friday. These are supplementals. When I think uh, uh, a video showing a location, a route, address, anything like that might be more helpful to you as you try to determine what happened in a particular disappearance. And as you are watching this video, I hope you will consider giving it the thumbs up. And if you are not yet a subscriber to the Unfound podcast channel, I hope you will do so today. As the title of this video says, this is a map analysis for the disappearance of Beatrice Viela from San Antonio, Texas, San Antonio, Texas in 1980. And what I have up here on the screen are three important locations for her disappearance, but you're probably looking at this and saying, well, Ed, it really only looks like there are two locations there. Well, I'm going to get into that in a moment. And I need to do that because Anthony and I made a mistake in the interview, and I would like to correct that right now. So if you've listened to the episode and you heard in my summation, uh, I, I said that I was going to correct something that was mentioned in the interview. Uh, this is it. In the interview, uh, we said that where her car was found uh, was not close to where she lived. I'm going to show you in this video that it's the exact opposite. Actually, it's very close. Why there was a misunderstanding there, why there was a mistake, I'm not sure but I'm correcting it now. So what you were looking at is down here at the bottom of the screen, this Vance Jackson Road address right here, that is where Beatrice lived at the time. Of course, she was living in Oscar's condo. That was not her own condo. It wasn't something that she was renting on her own. She was living in his place, and the understanding is that she was living there for free. Up at the top of the screen, Right there, you can see my pen up there. Uh, that is where the salon was, 8511 Blanco Road. Uh, once again, all of these addresses are in San Antonio. But then you come back down to the bottom of the screen and we go right over here to this red point, the part that's in red. That is actually where her car was found. So, like I said, in the interview we stated that it was miles away, that's not true. It's actually very close. I'm thinking that Anthony or I or both of us or something, we were typing the address in, we got it wrong somehow. So this is the correct uh, information now. Now to show you how close that is, I'm going to delete, now you can see where she lived and where she worked and where a car was found. Uh, up here, you go up to the top of the screen, up to here, and then you'd have to come back down to the bottom of the screen. That would be the directions. Of course, that's the long way around. But you can see that uh, she did not live very close to where she worked, and where her car was found was not close to where she worked. And we have to keep that in mind because Oscar's story is that they went to a beauty supply store, then they went to the, to the shop, and then she left never to be seen again. And her car wasn't found until a month and a half later down here. So I'm going to now remove that 8511 blank Blanco uh, address of where she worked just to show you how close uh, the other two locations are. All right, so now I'm gonna zoom up here or slide up, I should say, and zoom in. And I'm going to change this over instead of driving distance. I'm going to change it, change it to walking distance. And as you, if you've watched videos before, you know that when we do this, uh, it goes from a solid blue line to a dotted line. I guess it's a line. I don't know. It's a dotted pattern instead of a solid blue line. That's all 
the farther the distance is. Once again, over here on the right side of the screen is where she lived. Over here at the red point is where her car was found. You can see in the uh, little white box there, 18 minutes. It's not even uh, to walk it. It's not even a mile uh, away. Very, very close. Which I think um, lends more support to the idea that uh, Oscar certainly could have put her car there and walked back to the apartment. It would also, I think, lead, uh, it could lead us to believe that whatever happened to Beatrice actually happened at her, at the condo where she was living that Oscar owned. You could interpret it that way. The issue, though, is that it, at least at the time in 1980, it does seem that police did track down some people who did see Beatrice in this apartment complex over here before her car was found there. What's also a little confusing to me is that now that we know how close these two locations are, right here, right there, it's a little hard to understand why it took a month and a half to find the car. Uh, if it had been found 50 miles away, then I think we might be out, out uh, under, we might understand that. But being that it was only 0.9 miles away and it wasn't hidden, yes, it was in a parking spot that was reserved for somebody else. I'm not sure that really changes anything. Uh, you would think just the location being that close th that it would have been found sooner than a month and a half could lead us to believe maybe it wasn't there the whole time. That is a possibility. So those are the locations um, of that are important to this disappearance. Most importantly, this is where she was living in Oscar's condo. This is where her car was found in another a complex. So I thank you for watching this video for the disappearance of Beatrice Viela. And I'll talk to you again soon.